Hey, Stacy, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me on the show. Yeah. Um, well, let's start off with uh, telling everyone what, what you do and what you're here to talk about. Well, my name is Stacy Chalemi, and I am an author of 20 books. I have founded the Complete Herbal Guide uh, website, which brings over 157,000 people to the website monthly. We w talk about all different topics and all different health conditions like weight loss, how to heal the body naturally from different types of conditions, and how to keep the body fit, uh, different things to basically um, keep optimal health. Okay. Let's start off with talking about um, your typical client. What are the what are the main diseases or health issues that you help people overcome with with nutrition? With nutrition, a lot of people today is like a rush, rush society. Everybody is on the go. Everybody, you know, uh, doesn't want to sit and prepare meals because they constantly have things to do and places to go. So with our society, the way it is, and also with the foods, we, uh, so many processed foods out there, so many uh, fast food restaurants, large portions, and foods in the grocery stores that have so many preservatives, so many additives, and things that you, know, you don't necessarily see in other countries, you know, people are consuming these foods in our body our body doesn't know what to do with them and our body starts storing all these toxic um, ingredients and we start seeing different conditions come about because a lot of times we eat different types of foods that aren't necessarily pure what happens is the body doesn't know what to do with it it doesn't know how to break it down it stores it in the body and then after a while your organs become very sluggish your body doesn't you know, operate as well as it normally should. And you start seeing different types of symptoms come about, different conditions and slowly start to creep up on us. Fatigue, um, uh, you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, you know, lots of different things. And, you know, we were speaking earlier today and you were telling me about weight loss. Well, you know, our society, we have over 70% of the people in our society uh, struggle with obesity. And, you know, in our society, a lot of the conditions that people suffer from are related to overweight yeah totally and uh so what would you what are the what are the main foods that you would say to cut out completely of your diet if someone someone came to you with whatever issue you know, a lot of people, you know, they don't know where to begin. A lot of people, you know, they're feeling sluggish, tired, they want to lose weight, and they feel like they've tried everything and nothing works. And as you know, our metabolism tends to slow down. The older we get, the harder it is to lose the weight. And what I tell people is first, we have to cut down on those portion sizes. You know, in America, we're very used to having large portion sizes. And a lot of people think those large portion sizes are normal. And they're not. If you look at the palm of your hand, that's the type, that's the portion size right there. There, you know that's considered one portion and you know a lot of people you know they use they're used to those big plates of food and you know when you the first thing you have to do is you have to cut the portions out you have to cut out the carbs you know a little carbs is good you know I don't say to cut them out completely but you have to really start looking at how much carbs you're consuming on a daily basis and start to be a little more sensible and realistic also you have to look at the foods you um, are you eating are they can convert into sugar Sugar is also another thing that increases your appetite and it also puts on the pounds. Your body starts storing you know, a lot of fat when you have a lot of foods that turn into sugar and that's where diabetes starts to roll in. So these are some of the things that you have to start with. I say keep a food journal. That's you know step number one. Yeah, keep a food journal, track everything you eat. Now, do you incorporate uh, a fitness program as well with your clients? I always suggest exercise. Exercise is very important, but you know, everybody has, you know, their body is different and a lot of people are in different, you know, in different fit shape. You don't have to exercise two hours at the gym, you know, in order to lose weight. 15 minutes a day, just doing something that, you know, either walking is a great, you know, form of exercise. If you can get out there, walk around the block, you know, and every day, if you walk a little further and further, you'll start seeing yourself burn calories just from the walk-in, you know, that's a, a great thing in itself, you know, I, you know, 15 minutes of yoga, stretching, you know, walking, these are things that you can start with. And then as you increase your strength, you can get, move on to other things. Okay. Um, what are people who go to your website typically looking for? 
a lot of people, you know, look into the fitness category, the nutrition, that's a very, you know, popular topic. People are looking how they can improve their health, how they, you know, they don't want to feel the way they are. You know, as we get older, our hormones and our bodies change, both male and female. We're starting to feel ways that we didn't feel before. And people want to stop it. They want to say, okay, how do I feel better? How can I have more energy? How can I start, you know, having more strength? You know, I, you know, a lot of people say they, they're in bed and they don't want to roll out of bed. They're, they feel very sluggish. So, you know, energy is a big issue. You know, um, you know, people want to look good, you know, keeping that youth, that youthful fountain of, of youth, you know, people don't want to get older. They don't want to see the wrinkles. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to have to kind of, you know, move forward, even though realistically we are getting older. Well, how can we make ourselves feel young and how can we make ourselves, you know, slow down the age progression, so to speak? Right. And so what do you recommend for that, for slowing down the aging process, like for healthier skin, um, looking better and feeling better as you get older, over 40? I suggest there's a lot of organic natural serums that you could put on your face that, you know, keeping your face moisturized is a big issue. You know, a lot of times people don't realize it, but a lot of times we get wrinkles from dry skin. And a great way to try to prevent wrinkles is to put um, different types of moisturizers and lotions, you know, and to try to really be careful what you buy because there are a lot of things out there that aren't natural, aren't organic, have a lot of different ingredients that actually could do more harm to the skin than good. And, you know, they have even now they're coming out with uh, CBD creams and, and they're coming out with uh, different types of moisturizers that are natural for the skin, like turmeric masks and all these different things that actually can help the face and, and make the face, you know, feel tighter and firmer. And, and look even better. Right. You mentioned CBD, and I noticed you have a section of on your website for CBD. Um, let's talk about the benefits of CBD. Oh, there is tons of benefits to CBD. You know, uh, uh, there's a lot of controversy out there, but a lot of thing, problems I think stem from people not knowing not a lot about the um, about the supplement. You know, the supplement. Um, you know, there's different co different components of the supplement. We have the THC, which is the part of the leaf that can actually get you high, and there's the CBD, which doesn't get you high, and it's used for many different things. There's over a thousand different components in that leaf that they could actually extract and use for different things. Um, you know, the CBD can be used for chronic pain, cancer, epilepsy. Um, they use it now. They're putting it in a lot of different, um, in different beauty products because they're noticing that it actually helps with the, uh, with the skin and, you know, keeping the skin more youthful and young. And uh, they're, uh, they're using it to, you know, uh, put, to make your skin more moisturized and more smooth, kind of like coconut oil in effect, you know. Uh, coconut oil is very big for moisturizing your skin. Well, now they're putting a lot of the CBD in because it actually does the same thing similar to coconut oil. It moisturizes moisturizes the, the dry skin and, and it makes the skin, you know, feel much more smoother and more vibrant. Is it just the, the oil compound of it that does that or is it something in the CBD itself that's helping with the skin? Um, it's the it's the CBD itself that it, it's just the, when it goes into the body it does a lot of different things you know positive things for the body um, you know um, and it actually you know it just it, it tends to, to moisten the, the skin and um, you know it's been it's been used now for eye creams and face creams and uh, it's been very very popular right now and it's, they're having a lot of success you know they're seeing a lot of positive outcome with it yeah it's getting big here now that marijuana is legal in Canada, you're seeing a lot more, a lot, really a lot of more CBD products coming out. Yeah, but you have to be careful too, because there are a lot of CBD products out and you have to know, you know, which ones are good. You should, I just tell people to do your research because some, you know, they found, you know, some, some companies were claiming to have X amount of CBD in the actual um, product and they didn't actually have that much CBD oil as it was claiming. And so you have to be really careful. And, you know, I always say go with the reputable brands that, you know, have a good reputation and that have been, you know, marked as quality. Uh, CBD. Can you share with us some brands that you would recommend for CBD? Some I like um, I like uh, Charlotte's Web. I like um, Hemp Lucid. Um, I also like Nature Script, and um, I think those are, are really good brands that do uh, really well. 
I even put my um, my Shih Tzu on on uh, on CBD. I did, and he was uh, he was he was shaken, and he had uh, kidney failure, and he 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 shook like he had Parkinson's. And I put him on the CBD oil. I put it in his food, and in three days, the shaking stopped. And really? he's actually yeah, and he's actually moving around, and he's more mobile than he's ever been. Wow. That's all, and that's just like a oil-based solution you put in the food. Yeah, for for pets, they it comes in the CBD oil. They come actually. They have they make treats now. You can give them as a treat. You can um, you know, I tend to just like sprinkle it in his food, and he doesn't know you know the difference because you can't taste it, and he just he just eats it, and he's he's good like that. Yeah, and it must have the same kind of effects on humans as well. I mean, I've heard lots of good things about it. Yeah, I just actually my dad started taking the uh, the gummy bears and he, no, actually he takes the capsules and he he noticed actually that he suffers a lot of chronic pain and aches and pains because of his age and he, the the pain has reduced significantly since uh, he started taking the uh, CBD uh, capsules. And that's CBD without without the THC. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now your your book, the Complete Herbal Guide. Um, what, let's talk about that book. What can um, people find in there? That book is a is a, a six hundred page book, and it, it has all different herbals and different alternative um, medicine, um, teaching people what it's what it's used for, how it could heal the body. You know, a lot you know a lot of people hear about all these different herbs, but they don't know what it's for. And basically, that book goes into into deep detail about the the makeup of it, what it's good for, the different conditions it could help you with, and it kind of gives people you know a more uh, um, detailed education about the different um, supplements and the different alternative medicines that are out there that actually can heal our body naturally because there's so many different ways you could heal your body naturally um, you know a lot of people don't know much about it you know now it's getting very popular you know but our older generation as isn't as knowledgeable as the younger generation and you know it's it's a gr it's great to have like a, a you know, basically a, uh, a, like a Bible in a sense of, of supplements and, you know, alternative medicines that you could just revert to and look at and find out, you know, which supplement is good for what condition and what, you know, to give you idea of what, you know, might be beneficial for yourself. Are there any particular herbs or supplements that uh, stand out as, as a more complete uh, supplement? Um, do you mean something that's popular that works really well with the body? Yeah, for different things. Um, well, you know, probiotics are really good. I suggest probiotics to everybody. Everybody should take a probiotic daily. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, even when I started taking a probiotic, um, I noticed that my allergies went away about 85%. Um, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, you'll hear a lot of people t uh, say how their digestive system works better, how they feel better, they feel more energetic, you know, when they are on a probiotic, when they start to consume in the, uh, the probiotics on a daily basis. Is there a particular type of probiotic that you uh, recommend? No, I don't have a real a particular one off the top of my head, but you know there there are a lot of good ones out there. Again, I say you know you have to really you know do your research, you know, and um, make sure that it's a, it's a, a good brand that doesn't have a lot of uh, any any like impure uh, ingredients. What I say is turn turn the the ingredients over, look at it. If you see ingredients that you can't pronounce and you don't know what it is, it's probably not good for you. And you know that's how I I go about you know telling people who don't know a lot about you know the different ingredients and, and different you know components of different supplements and, and and things like that now you said you overcame something when you were younger um at the age of five, I had, um, I had encephalitis that had traveled to my brain and it caused scar tissue damage. I was in a coma for four days and when I came out, they thought I was going to be paraplegic. Uh, when I uh, came out, um, uh, you know, it was a miracle and I, I didn't have, I wasn't paraplegic. I didn't have brain damage, but I did have scar tissue damage, which caused me to have epilepsy. And to this day, they can't locate the actual scar tissue. So for my entire life I had battled with, you know, ongoing seizures that were uncontrollable. And, you know, throughout my life, it was a, a, a very hard struggle and it was definitely a, a journey with lots, lots of obstacles. And um, later on in my life, um, I had met up with a herbalist and I I was uh, doing some 
uh, writing and some research for him. And that's when I started learning about all these different supplements and all these different herbs. And I started, you know, looking for supplements that, you know, could help me um, with my condition. And I started applying a lot of the stuff I was learning to my own life. And I noticed a, a significant decrease in my seizures. I went from maybe nine seizures monthly to six to five to four to three to two and to none. And I had changed my lifestyle. I had changed, you know, I started cleansing, detoxing, and I was changing the way I was eating. I was exercising, you know, I had dropped weight from all, from, you know, changing my whole, uh, my whole uh, lifestyle around and my seizures um, eventually became control. And so you don't get seizures anymore? No, I don't. No. Awesome. Uh, let's talk about um, detoxing. That's uh, I've heard a lot of controversy about that as well. Um, what what kind of detoxing do you do? Um, I like to, um, you know, there's lots of de detoxes. I do a whole body cleanse where I like to cleanse the whole body. That's when you cleanse the different organs and stuff. People could start with using a fiber. You know, they can start with using milk thistle, which is great for your liver as well. Um, and also, you know, they have colon cleanses that are really good for, you know, especially if you've never done a detox to get all the toxins out of your body. And um, colon cleanses are a really good way. They also have whole body cleanses that you could, you know, you can find also that are really good. Um, and then there's, uh, there's different teas and different types of uh, supplements that are good for detox as well. Like dandelion tea is really good to detox the body. Um, a lot of times I'll have dandelion tea at nighttime and, um, you know, you, you definitely feel, you know, energetic and more better, you know, when you start to detox. And that was one thing that actually um, I started noticing when my seizures started to decrease. It was when I started detoxing. I also noticed a huge increase in my energy level as well yeah and what are we uh when you're detoxing and you're flushing out toxins um, what are what toxins are we removing from the body we're removing a lot of a lot of toxins from the from the liver from the colon from you know from from different cells and you know your any impurities in the body you know are ten are, are flushing out of your body you know it's it's you know it's good to drink a lot of water during this time and you know and you can you know um and it's also good to start changing your eating habits as well because you can detox all you want but you don't want to you know start uh you know consuming foods that are really bad for you because it kind of defeats the purpose it's also you know you don't realize it but the air we breathe and and all the toxins in the air and the pollutions and everything else that we're exposed to we can't we t our body tends to create toxins in that sense just as well you know we're you know we're con constantly our body is consuming toxins and they build up in our body um you know so detoxin is 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 beneficial for everyone do you do you have clients that you work with or are you just posting is it just your website or people come to your website or are you like doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with people I do coaching with people, but mostly I like to work on my website. Um, I like to, you know, I give, I like to create a lot of, you know, good articles and, you know, I do also, I do coaching with, with clients as well. I do a lot of public speaking. I get invited to different events to speak on health and to speak on, on different topics and, and, you know, and I always like to, you know, um, help people in any way possible. So I do do coaching. I do do public speaking. And I, I also work on my website where I do, you know, I, I also post a lot of articles as well as a lot of, uh, we have a bunch of experts and doctors that post as well on our site. Okay. And what are, what are the main topics that you, you tend to talk about on your website? We cover all the conditions from A to Z on our website. And, um, you know, we talk about health, we talk about beauty, we talk about, you know, fitness, we talk about exercise, nutrition, um, you know, we, we go over everything, you know, everything that, that is part of our life, you know, even sleep, insomnia, you know, uh, you know, talking about how, you know, you know, a lot of people struggle with, you know, getting a good night's sleep. We, do, we you know, we, we discuss different ways they can, you know, go about helping their sleeping habits. Um, we, we basically, we try to cover everything around the, around the book, you know, try to give people a, a good education on, on how to live a, a healthy lifestyle. Okay. Could you take us through what your typical day would look like from waking up and then all the way till going to bed? Do you, do you, do you have like a morning routine that you follow or anything like that? 
Well, in the morning, I, you know, I tend to like to meditate. Um, you know, I tend to like to, you know, just, you know, kind of like cleanse my, my, my mind and, and my soul and, you know, just take a few minutes just to, to relax and, and to, you know, breathe the fresh air and, and to, you know, start the day off right. I like to do yoga in the morning. Um, I like to, you know, stretch in the morning. Um, you know, then I'll get up and I'll start, you know, I'll have breakfast and uh, I'll, you know, then I'll start my day with work and you know and then I'll try to exercise later in the morning I'll I like to go to the gym personally and I, I stay in the gym for a while and and do different you know exercising and and then I'll come back and I'll you know I'll have lunch and you know I basically I like to stick with a lot of greens um, in the morning I'll, I you know I eat I eat eggs and you know I I, uh, I tend to eat my eggs and I, I'll eat it with spinach and vegetables and stuff like that. And, and then the more in the afternoon, I'll have something light, not too heavy, you know, but just enough to, to fill me. I like pro having protein drinks as well. You know, they kind of, so I don't eat as much and I'm getting a, a lot of protein in my diet as well. And then, you know, I just go out throughout my routine and my, my different, you know, different things I have to get done during the day and my work. And at night, you know, I try to eat something, you know, make something for the family that's healthy and uh, I started to stick with the greens and the proteins, um, the chickens, the fishes. I stay away from the meat. You know, I don't really don't like to bring meat in the house too much. And um, I'm basically, you know, just, just like, to, I think, you know, the more greens you have in your diet, the better. And with your protein is, do you just use whey protein or is it a plant-based protein? Do you have a preference on, on which one? I, I personally, I, I like the, the premier, um, the uh, protein shakes that are made already. You know, I have friends that use the way I have um, people that I know that make their own, you know, that, uh, you know, they put a scoop, you know, a couple of scoops of, uh, of a protein, you know, like that they like, and then they put a lot of different vegetables and a lot of different, um, uh, different fruits and, and they make their own protein drinks, you know, and I've tried that and it's really good as well. You can make, you know, if, if, if you can make it right, it, it'll fill you for the day. You know, you can get really full, you know, on, on those protein drinks. Yeah, I tend to do that myself. I usually throw a bunch of spinach and then my protein yeah. and some, some Greek yogurt and then a little bit of fruit and I get my 40 odd grams of protein and yeah, it tastes good. Yeah. And we, it's also, we have like a lot of recipes for protein shakes on the website and for people who like to make themselves fresh smoothies, we have that on the website as well. We have different recipes and healthy recipes for people to make at home that are easy. Okay. And you said you stay away from meat by meat. You mean basically like pork or, or beef? red meat. Yeah. Pork. I try to stay away from the red meat. You know, I try to focus more on the fish and the, and the chicken. I like to, you know, it's, for me, it, it's, you know, it, it's better for your body. And, um, you know, I, I don't really, you know, when, once you, you stop eating red meat and you don't, you don't miss it anymore. And then if you have it, you'll notice how heavy it is on your stomach and how hard your body has to work to break it down because your body, you know, um, you know, works really hard to, to break down, you know, foods like meat and, and stuff like that, you know? So if you can nix it out of your diet, it's, it's definitely a plus. Yeah. Do you supplement with enzymes at all when you eat? Um, no, not, no, not really. Just kind of let the plants, plants take the, yeah. take the reins on that. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about uh, some of your other books. Um, what, what are the books you have? Uh, and what are the subjects of them? Well, I, I wrote a couple different books on, on, um, on, on supplements. And, uh, I also wrote a book on positive thinking and how to, you know, how to stay young and feel young. Um, you know, I, I've also, you know, I do a lot of, uh, trying to teach people about epilepsy. So I wrote a couple books on epilepsy and how to cope with the disorder, because as you know, with any condition in life, when you have any kind of condition that you're battling with your whole life gets turned upside down and it can be very, you know, very, uh, hard on the individual. And that's one of the reasons why I created the complete herbal guide was because you know as I was helping myself and helping other people with the disorder I realized that you know the things that I was teaching people on how to cope with epilepsy could be applied to any condition and any disorder and even people that are going through things you know mentally you know struggling in in life with certain obstacles you know all these things can be can be helped you know naturally through different you know 
through different uh, ways of um, thinking and, and different ways of doing things, changing your lifestyle. So that's, you know, how basically the Complete Herbal Guy came about. And um, it became very popular very quickly because people really want to, you know, learn how to feel better. They want to learn how to cope with what they're dealing with because everybody has something. And if you find somebody that says they don't have something, well, you know, they're lying. <laughs> yeah. So um, how long has it been since you had your last seizure? It's been years now. So yeah. I, I've been doing really well. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, but it's like, it, it, like epilepsy doesn't go away. So it's a, it's a lifetime of, of just, you know, doing the right thing and, and hoping, you know, that you never have one. You could have one at any time. You don't know, you know, your body, you know, will make, give you, you know, signs and stuff like that. But, you know, for someone with epilepsy, it's very scary because they never know when the next seizure is going to occur. So, you know, one thing, you know, people need to do, I tell people to be, you know, you have to be your own doctor. You have to do the research. You have to understand your disorder. You have to understand the condition and you have to, you know, start figuring out different things you could do to help your body. So your body doesn't get stressed out and so your body can maybe you know have less seizures or you know one day maybe you know you can become controlled you know I still take medication but with the medication and with the different lifestyle changes and the detoxing and eating differently and, and sleeping my habits sleeping habits are differently there's definitely you know I, I had a huge improvement so it's really like anything you can't you can't just change one thing you have to change everything in your life when you have something now you were taking medication prior to to changing your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, were you, you you were still getting seizures when you were on the medication before you changed your your lifestyle? There was a there was a, a time frame where I didn't drive for over fifteen years. Um, you know, it was uh, you know it was trying to get you know my seizures controlled because when I was younger my seizures were controlled up until the point where my body started going through menstrual changes. So when your hormones started changing, that's when my body started going having seizures again. And so you know then it was trying to get them controlled, and you know they were controlled for a little while, and then they started up again. So it was consistently, you know, a battle of trying to, to get them 100% controlled, you know, and, um, you know, so I couldn't drive for a, a long period of time until they were able to figure out exactly how to control the seizures. And, you know, it, it was when I combined the, my sleeping habits, my eating habits, the detoxing of my body, along with the medication, that's when my seizures started to decrease and finally go away. But it was definitely a, a, a really hard, hard battle. And, and, and a, a very uh, a long battle, to say the least. Yeah. Were there ever signs that you were going to have a seizure or would they just kind of come on? I always instant? got signs. I always knew ahead of time. Sometimes I would know weeks in advance that something wasn't brewing right and, you know, that I had to be really careful because I, I didn't feel like my normal self. I would get little feelings. I guess you call them auras, which is considered a seizure, but it's not a real full blown seizure. And they were little triggers, you know, and I would have to, you know, anytime I got those, those feelings, I'd have to put myself in a safe spot and just sit there and, and just, you know, make sure nothing, you know, happens, you know, where I can get myself, you know, hurt. Uh, because my seizures, you know, I would go unconscious. So you know, I had to make sure that before I went unconscious, I was in a safe area. Yeah, not to bump your head or anything like that. Right. Um, cause yeah, I'm not, I don't know a whole lot about epilepsy and seizures. So, uh, what, um, sorry, uh, how long would a seizure last? For, for different people, it, it's, it can last, you know, some people have them short, some people could have them for a long period of time. You know, um, my seizures would last, you know, no more than, you know, probably 35 seconds to 40 seconds, um, you know, and then I would come back, you know, I might feel a little dazed and confused and I'm have, a, you know, experience a little memory loss, um, you know, but after that I would might feel a little fatigue and then I was back to myself. And does stress have a lot to do with, uh, with oh, stress setting them up? Yeah, stress could definitely cause seizures. Stress is a big factor for a lot of people with epilepsy because you really have to look at life differently, you know, because life is a stressful place, you know, and, uh, you know, you have to really learn how to not sweat the little things in life. And, and when the big things do occur, you have to take a step back and, you know, you have to learn how to, you know, there's always a, there's always a solution to everything, you know, and, um, you know, you have to just learn how to take things 
with stride and not, not get yourself so worked up. And it takes practice, you know, it takes practice to learn how to control your, your level of stress. Do you find meditation helped a lot with that? Oh, most definitely. Meditation definitely helps. It helps you focus. It helps you relax. It helps you look at life differently. And then if you, there's a lot of good books out there on, on meditation and how to, and even um, the Gaia channel, um, you can go on to the internet. They have great, um, great different videos. To, and I go on there all the time and they can teach you things. And for people with, with meditation, um, they want to learn how to meditate. They have people there to show you how to meditate, to show you how to do yoga, to show you how to clear your mind and that's a great that's a great um website to go to for for uh, information as well that's gaia gaia.com yeah yes. there's a great website so was there any one big change that you made that you feel contributed to making you better I think the, the detoxin helped me tremendously. When I started detoxing, um, I noticed my, that's when my seizures started dropping significantly. Um, it seemed like, you know, from, from all the research I did, you know, when you, when you detox, you're taking all the, the impurities out from your body. So your organs and your body doesn't have to work as hard when there's not as much impurities in it. So, you know, it, I wasn't stressing my body out, so to speak. You know, when your body's working double time, you're, you're putting a lot of stress on your body and you know that's when you know illness occurs that's when you know for people with epilepsy that's when seizures could occur too and uh, when I started detoxing that's when I noticed a significant change in the amount of seizures I was having and how often do you detox I detox every day. Most people yeah. don't. Yeah, but I, I do. Like I take, I take uh, detox supplements. I take milk thistle every night. Um, you know, I'll have my dandelion tea, like I mentioned to you earlier. You know, turmeric is great for it. It's anti-inflammatory because even with anti-inflammatory, um, you know, when, when you're suffering from inflammation, that can cause a lot of different, you know, conditions. You know, um, you can cause joint pain. It can cause seizures. It can cause lots of different things. So, you know, turmeric in your diet is a great thing to, to, for anybody, you know, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, take it on a daily basis. A lot of people swear by it. You could even buy the, the turmeric root and you can grind it up and you could even, I have one friend who puts it in her scrambled eggs in the morning. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and she says, you don't even taste the turmeric. She says, yeah. So you, what does it even taste like? Um, I, I always take it through the capsule. I, I've so never, you know, I don't. I, I just recently bought the root. And I'm going to try it. Um, I have it actually in my kitchen, but I haven't tried it yet, so I, I don't know exactly how it tastes. But I always took it by the capsule. But I do have it in my kitchen, and I'm going to uh, try it, and I'll definitely let you know. Yeah. Have you ever done any fasting to detox? I, I personally, because of my epilepsy, I don't choose to fast. Um, I had pre friends that I, that I knew that, that did do the fasting and I've had clients that did the fasting and I, you know, for, for them, it was, I think it was very stressful for them. And what happens is I notice is once they started eating again, you know, they put on the weight just as much because they're losing the water weight first mm -hmm. and, you know, they're not losing the actual pounds. And once you start eating again, those, that war weight comes right back. So, you know, some people like it, you know, it's preference again, but for me for personally, I, I'm not a big uh, fasting fan. Um, you know, I believe in, you know, eating a regular healthy diet every day, but, you know, being cautious of what you eat and how much you eat. And not, you know, everybody likes to cheat a little, everybody could have, you know, it's just, you can't go overboard. You know, you have to know, you have to be reasonable. You know, if you're having that little chocolate craving, all right, you have a little piece of chocolate, you know, even maybe go healthy and have dark chocolate if you know, if you can, if you like the taste, you know, yeah. but you know, everyone can have a little something, you know. Are there any particular foods that you cut out totally like bread or, or milk, dairy products, anything like that? I cut out a lot of dairy. I don't really eat any more cheeses, you know, like a little bit, but not, not much. Um, with milk, I don't really drink milk anymore. There's so many antibiotics and so many impurities in the milk. Um, you know, so many people I knew there, they, you know, they experience a lot of problems drinking milk, you know, because of the antibiotics and because of the way, you know, what they do to the, the cows. You know, a lot of times it, people don't know, but they put hundreds of cows in one confined area and those cows, even their hoofs get deformed. And what happens, happens is is that when they they get one cow gets sick all the cows get sick and then they'll start giving them antibiotics and they'll shoot antibiotics into those milk and then they're shooting other you know other stuff into the milk and who do you think's drinking that we are 
mm-hmm. then it's going into our body, you know, and we don't realize it, but it is. And then, you know, that's when the problems start to occur. You know, nowadays, like um, there's lots of articles about it. You know, a lot of girls, um, young little girls are getting their, their menstruation cycle. They're starting at eight years old. They're starting to develop you know, parts of their body that they shouldn't develop until later on in life because of the hormones that they put in the milk. So, you know, I tend to, I, I, I use other, other things like, you know, almond milk and I use different, you know, more healthier, you know, choices, coconut milk and, you know, um, you know, and try to do different things uh, that don't necessarily uh, have all the uh, impurities in it. And bread, do you still eat bread? I eat a little of it. You know, I, I, you know, I never was a big bread eater, but I cut down on the pasta comp- almost, I would say 80%. And I cut down because, you know, I'm, t- I'm still trying to lose weight. I have a goal weight that I want to reach that I haven't got to yet, you know, and, you know, I'm determined to, you know, go as close as that goal weight as I, as I can. And, you know, one of the things I was mentioning to you earlier, the biggest thing that we do is we eat foods that convert to sugar and then that causes weight gain and that, you know, and that pasta and bread are two big things that convert to sugar, you know, even bananas, you know, they tell you, you know, ease up, e- bananas are great. They, you know, they, they even help depression, but you know, they have a lot of sugar in them and, you know, and they are a hundred calories a banana. So, you know, if you do like bananas, you have to be, you know, careful how much you eat on a weekly basis. Yeah. In moderation, cause they yeah. are high in potassium. They are, they do have good things, but I've read that before too, that they were really high in sugar. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, if people wanted to find out more about you, uh, where can they go to, uh, to learn more and find out more about herbs and natural healing? Well, they can come to the website. It's the complete herbal guide.com. So it's the complete herbal guide.com. And, you know, if they come there, they can contact me. I'll be happy, you know, to, you know, answer any questions if people have questions. And, you know, I also have my other website, stacychalemi.com, you know, if people want to get in touch with me, but on our website, we have, we, you know, we talk about everything. So if people really, you know, have a, a concern or an issue or a symptom that they're looking to try to find solutions for, you know, they can come on and we have even a, a button that says, you know, check your symptom. And, you know, they could put their symptom in the, in the bar and then they can, you know, a list of articles, you know, that relates to their, their issue will pop out that could help them. And we have things on fitness and recipes and, and nutrition and everything else. And like I mentioned earlier, we have uh, experts that write for us and that submit articles onto our site, giving their input on lots of different topics about health. And your books are all available there. Are they available on Amazon as well? They're available on Amazon. They're available on our website. Um, uh, you can you, you can get them in Barnes and Nobles. Um, they're they're all over the place. All over the place. Okay, we'll put a we'll put a list of all your books in the show notes so people can find you. And okay. uh, thanks for coming on today and sharing your knowledge with us. Oh, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Well, take care, and we'll we'll speak again soon. Thank you. It was all great right. talking to you. Yeah, you too.